Good morning, everyone. Yeah. And uh, welcome to this uh, attempt at the uh, first part of our SIP uh, troubleshooting uh, workshop. Are we scroll? This is how our typical mornings look like. A lot of issues. So today we'll look at uh, uh, some approaches in uh, old and new school to, uh, to get our job done. So first of all, who are we? Uh, I'm Simon, but I'll go first. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Lange. I uh, work for uh, Liberty Global here in Amsterdam. And uh, I uh, look after uh, quite a large uh, uh, voice infrastructure. In parallel, I'm also the uh, uh, co-founder and developer of uh, Homer, which uh, hopefully some of you have heard about before. I'm going to see the capture too far. That's good enough. Thank you. Um, and hopefully you heard me. So uh, I'm the second guy here. He's really weird. Uh, co-founder of Homer Project and uh, yeah, uh, voice guy in the day developer at night. Next to me is Alexander. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm senior uh, voice expert by QC uh, and I'm founder of uh, Homer Project. So we can go okay. Just be modest, you did a lot of stuff. I'm not really there. <coughs> so, uh, the first thing we like to do uh, super quickly is just uh, scope the audience so we can uh, sort of calibrate what we'll talk about, keep the boring stuff if it's going to be too boring for uh, most of you. So. Uh, hopefully not offensive. We uh, have just three sample categories here just to understand where you're sitting uh, skill-wise. So uh, how many of you would you fall uh, in the first category? So playing with voice? Nobody good. Second? Voice ops? Good stuff. So everybody else is going to be okay, developer and so on. Or do we skip anything? If anybody feels unrepresented, please speak now. Going forward, uh, about the workshop. So uh, it's a mix. It's not really uh, going to be a workshop by everybody's uh, standards, but which are our best products. So it's not going to be just a presentation. We, of course, uh, develop solutions. So we'll uh, uh, somewhat focus on our uh, what we bring uh, to the community. But uh, we decided today to do, uh, first of all, uh, a little bit of scoping of what we replaced before just talking about you know, what, what we do or what we think we do better than uh, before. So in a workshop, uh, we'll assume that everybody knows uh, extremely good the uh, protocols that we'll deal with. And we'll uh, take a look, basically, at the, the, the tools uh, to get the job done, some of the uh, classic approaches versus uh, new ones, uh, which, of course, include uh, open seeps uh, in, uh, in many points. Uh, references, community links to all the projects that we'll mention, and uh, what we did, of course. Uh, just to note that you see at the bottom of the screen, some of the uh, tools that we'll mention might uh, require licenses. Uh, if so, we'll indicate it very clearly, but most of the things I will mention will be in the open source domain, of course. So, we start with the, uh, let's say, a uh, little bit of historical references, how we uh, get the job done. Uh, on, on the average, of course, when you're uh, troubleshooting uh, issues with SIP, you gotta capture packets. There's uh, there's no other way around it. Sometimes you gotta see the protocol. If it's yours, everything is fine. It's sitting on your desk, but so most times it's not. So uh, we'll, we'll see how you know the classic uh, approaches to uh, to getting a job done. So uh, you'll see some old, well-known friends uh, talking about troubleshooting. Of course. Uh, issues might uh, appear in many areas. Sorry, I'll blow my nose, I have severe allergies. Uh, issues might manifest themselves in the thousands of ways. Uh, many times they will be hard to tell just by the, uh, the side effect of the issue. Uh, but this is where we uh, think uh, many of the, uh, let's say, uh, investigation troubleshooting areas anyway uh, are concentrated. So most times it's going to be uh, interrupt issues different vendors, different configurations, different implementations, uh, and of course, a lot of misconfigurations all over the place. Uh, this is, in our experience, uh, one of the main drivers of, uh, uh, of issues and uh, you know, one of the, the typical areas of investigation when we're looking at uh, troubleshooting. Uh, negotiation, of course, is another big one. So anywhere from uh, unmatching codecs, uh, transport, DTMF, uh, uh, pet issues with uh, uh, with net detection and whatnot, and of course anything uh, that has to do with uh, more than uh, average SDP complexity, which uh, of course uh, 
takes away a lot of our time just uh, uh, not just capturing but then looking at it. Then of course system performance issues, so it's not always the protocol's fault, sometimes our systems are just falling apart, they're under attack, uh, they're again misconfigured or uh, there are assumptions all over the place which can impact uh, performance and it's not always obvious unless we have all the data that we need to look at. And of course the network part uh, your switch might be fine, and your uh, ISP or your transport is falling apart. How to tell? Or maybe the customer has a uh, one of crappy uh, CPLGs on your router, and uh, you don't know until you have proof that something is happening. So uh, once again, packet capture will tell the story. And then of course, the user. So the user is uh, <laughs> yeah. OSI 8 <laughs> level, uh, the user also is a uh, faulty element in the picture and now you can tell by exclusion usually. So once you know that everything on your side looks good, then you start thinking, you know, what did the user actually uh, do wrong? Uh, also, <coughs> the elements. So when we're capturing packets, uh, not just packets, we're capturing information for troubleshooting, uh, uh, let's say voice issues, the most generic way we can say. Uh, we're dealing with uh, uh, quite a hand, uh, handful of elements. Here we just, you know, this list is not intended to be anywhere complete, but it's just a, a breakdown of what we can extract uh, from uh, each of those uh, uh, systems. So of course we have our uh, user agency, as we see, is back to back user agent, and soft switches as a, intended as a, a mix of those. Uh, here, of course, we get our protocols out, so RTP and uh, RTCP. And then uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, a number of additional uh, uh, details, CDRs, QoS metrics that the uh, relays might generate, uh, application logs and whatnot. All of this, of course, is useful when it comes together. We'll see how uh, proxies, registers, and routers, they have, uh, uh, of course, more protocol-related information, but they make very interesting logs. And, of course, we can capture straight off the network. And last but not least, again, the user. So the user is going to be uh, many times the, uh, the main input point. They'll give you the timestamp of the issue and description, and then the ultra mean opinion score, which is always going to be lower than any other measurements. So, what are the tools that uh, everybody used already? Let's see. Um, Again, here is just a, a little introduction, but regardless of uh, your experience, you will. Uh, you're going to be capturing at some point. There is no way that you can do your job without, or at least this is what we know by experience. Yes. Uh, we, over uh, the last years, we have followed uh, literally uh, hundreds, if not almost thousands of uh, customers, and uh, they were all having the very same exact challenges. It's, it's starting uh, the same over and over again. So hopefully here we'll tackle some of those. So yeah. You simply never know what you're going to be dealing with. So let's see some of the classics uh, that we have all used. This is done, Wireshark, T-Shark, uh, and Grab. Oh, no, this is done twice. I think it fits twice. And Grab, all version. Grab, and then tools like uh, SM Grab, you got Seed Dump, and our own uh, cat agent, which is, uh, yeah, at the end, for a reason. So many of these things are, of course, overlapping. They do the same things, different ways, or slightly different ways and they can produce the same. The problem is that you never know what you're going to be finding on the system uh, that you got to troubleshoot. So the first of all, uh, of course, is uh, our older friend TCP dump. Grandfather of uh, packet capture, you'll find it on any system, and it, as boring as it is, you got to know how to use it uh, to, to produce what you need. Here we have just a few silly examples of uh, you know where things start. Uh, T-Shark, uh, which is uh, the, the terminal, of course, version of uh, the Wireshark appliance, is also a very, very uh, powerful, powerful and important tool. It does, of course, uh, packet capture. What it brings, of course, uh, additionally, is the, um, uh, the filtering capabilities of uh, Wireshark, so a familiar format to uh, go directly at your protocols, and the uh, heuristic uh, analysis of RTP, which is uh, quite useful. Uh, when uh, doing post-marking analysis of uh, packet captures. Of course, this is all, um, let's say, as is, it's hard to uh, report into a centralized platform without doing a lot of scraping, parsing, and uh, funny things. So, uh, one-shot uh, analysis, great tool. We all know it. Uh, here's another quick example from the past. So, uh, many times we own the system, Many times we don't, and uh, when you got to capture remotely, you can leverage 
all of those tools uh, in different ways just by interacting with the uh, standard uh, system uh, tools and pipes. So here's, again, a few silly examples of how you can uh, just treat uh, how it is to become Wireshark or even build a pipe with SIPREP uh, too, which is one of the tools that we have, uh, we develop and maintain. Uh, we'll see this in more detail, but basically what you do here is just uh, capture a remote system and stream back to your uh, um, to your workstation wherever you do the analysis in real time. Uh, also, classic from everyone, from for everyone, I think uh, more and more now uh, decoding and dealing with the encrypted traces. So we all know that Wireshark uh, yeah, supports. Uh, this feature, uh, you got of course have all of the uh, um, certificates, and in a, in a few occasions you need both the uh, server and the client certificates uh, in order to perform the um, decoding. Here we have again a couple of examples. This is of course all material that We're everybody. Of yeah, of course. So you, if you have a friend in NSA, they can uh, just uh, share, it. share it with you. Uh, <laughs> No, nothing important here, I think we have to spend a lot of time. These slides is just more to build the background on top of which we'll uh, build uh, the remaining parts. Uh, so those were the you know, plain old uh, tools. Here we have a few more, which are uh, going to be also familiar with uh, many of you, we believe. Sorry about the small breaks. Pick up seed dump, where you will find in a lot of recipes uh, all over the place to uh, to build your own uh, one-off uh, capture environments and to analyze uh, traffic uh, as long as you don't have too much to analyze. It's, uh, it's a great tool which just basically takes and splits uh, the, uh, the inbound protocols uh, by files and you can do spend a lot of time afterwards trying to figure out which, which call was which and uh, how to put them together. So nice tool, but... Uh, oh, well, no. Yeah, for uh, good for very simple scenarios. SNGraph is uh, another fantastic <coughs> tool uh, that I'm sure many of you have used. Uh, it basically gives you uh, a, a little capture uh, analysis uh, console directly in the terminal, so it, it will capture the, the traffic or read from pickup, of course, if you're doing post marking and uh, it will give you uh, filtering and uh, analysis and a little call flow uh, representation that are in the terminal. I think it's a fantastic tool, uh, again, for uh, uh, where you cannot afford using anything else and you really need uh, a little help doing your job faster. Here we have a couple of examples how you can uh, run uh, SNGrep and uh, what it shows. Uh, Secret is something that uh, we uh, release and maintain. Yeah, I'll pass it over to Alexander because he's the lead author and I'll be more interested. Yeah, okay. Because special on Secret, this was uh, just a small Perl script uh, on, on top of Ender, uh, which make a colorize of output and so on and so on. It was released in 2005, if I remember. Yeah. And after some time, we okay, decided it should be native code, yeah, it should, should be C. So, and we completely rewrote uh, this application, and now it's based not on Perl uh, C, so it's uh, very performance uh, enough, and he has support uh, regular expression. Perl regular expression, you can make a lot of manipulation, or not manipulation, searching attempts uh, to get invites uh, from to a sequence number, and so you see some examples here. Also, um, you have possibility to send from directly messages to Horn. Uh, so, for example, you would like to see travel, sh uh, travel uh, call, you can uh, capture and immediately send to home and make uh, some analysis uh, later with uh, web interface. Uh, also, a nice uh, feature of ZipRap if you have, um, it's probably the next one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so if you have friendly scanner attack, you can just uh, run ZipRap in, uh, in the ground, and ZipRap can detect a friendly scanner attack and automatically will send a uh, packet of that to this direction and uh, block it. So you should not uh, install IP tables like it's source in the original one. Uh, just kill uh, ZipRap and it will be enough. Also, a good feature that you can just also run ZipRap uh, like Tshark in the ground and make splitting of size or timestamp uh, pcap files. So you can just make a rotation and delete. Uh, okay, let's say, say uh, I would like to keep uh, pcap in last two weeks, yeah, and it will be keep it in your HTTP and uh, be automatically removed after uh, this time. Okay, so um, so it's uh, ZipRap is available on uh, GitHub in our repository. You can install, download, 
what is needed is only uh, Lippi Capital Library and uh, Record Scratch, nothing more. And also, of course, you see it's a covers, um, coverized uh, report, um, output, which is very, very easy to find uh, year or issues uh, in call scenario. And this concludes our historical view on uh, how to capture packets the old way. So, uh, of course, all of those tools are uh, uh, key. They cannot be uh, replaced 100% or 100% of the time. They will stay in our life forever. Uh, but, of course, things can be done better and easier. So, uh, centralized capture solutions. That's uh, what we do. Uh, on the market, we have, uh, well, first of all, sorry, I was keeping the, the, the stone. Uh, what is a, a centralized capture system? Just a, a, an overview of the uh, concept. Generally, they are uh, permanent, uh, long-term capture systems designed for networks that uh, need to do the same job over and over again. They have a big fleet of engineers, or not, but uh, anyway, they deal with this task continuously, so they need to be able to uh, investigate anything that happens or has happened on their network over a period of time without uh, reinventing the wheel every day, without performing <coughs> manual captures or anything like that. Uh, so there is a bunch of uh, uh, solutions on the market. Most of them are commercials, and some of them are heavily commercial. They cost a lot of money. Uh, so this is exactly how uh, we came together. Some years ago, uh, we were both uh, basically doing similar jobs, dealing with uh, very expensive commercial tools. Then you go home, and how do you do it? You know, you miss those uh, uh, fancy features and having a, a centralized place to do things. And uh, those things are basically, you know, uh, having a, a big uh, centralized point of aggregation where you can store all this information and share with uh, your colleagues or even yourself in the future because, you know, we, we do uh, the same things over and over again. And many times just having your uh, uh, part of information consistently available is key. Uh, instant troubleshooting. So uh, you don't have to waste time going and figuring out how to get that data, how to get those packets, how to replicate the issue with the customer. You already have it. It's sitting there. All you have to do is find uh, the packet, which is most time, just a matter of knowing the, the time range and a few details. And then, of course, long-term storage and metrics. So uh, having all of this data produces data. So you can see what happens uh, on, over a, a, a monitor a network uh, over time, how it changes its usage, its issues, and its performance. So what it really delivers is uh, accelerating uh, the investigation uh, process, uh, reduce its complexity, uh, reduce the need to uh, give access to uh, systems. So, you know, I've seen it myself uh, even in uh, very big networks, uh, you know, the people that shouldn't have access to uh, to key platforms do just because that's the only way to get out the information in case of issues. So to troubleshoot it, you uh, basically uh, make the risk even larger. And then of course, yes, use those solutions empower teamwork. So you can easily, more easily share with your colleagues your experience, your investigations, and your results. Uh, here we have a little uh, list which is in no way uh, complete of uh, the solutions for this task, which are overlapping and uh, we are familiar with. So the first one that you see is Homer. Uh, by the way, uh, how many of you are familiar with Homer at all, or know what it is, or you have used it? Yet? Okay, that's a good percentage. Thank you, guys. Uh, here we have listed some of our uh, competition, and uh, I don't think we have to go into those platforms. You probably have, uh, if you use Homer, you probably know them and they have excluded them for some reason, most likely the cost. Uh, so yeah, Void Monitor I think is, uh, is a, a good uh, neighbor, but uh, he has a commercial element to it, so we take it as commercial. And of course we have the very expensive stuff, uh, such as our Google Collider. We also have uh, our own commercial platform, but since it's commercial today, we'll uh, just barely mention it in the list. Uh, what we'll talk about, is uh, Homer and what's here in Homer and how uh, it can help you uh, solve or you know make your life easier uh, when investigating. So uh, maybe we want to give a little bit of a quick uh, introduction to how uh, it was actually born before we go into how it evolved today. Yeah, okay. It's uh, also was after um, um, okay. I wrote this secret application 
Bei Graeber, halt, halt, okay, wir waren, wir waren dort, es ist sehr, sehr schwer zu machen, das Schuss für die Kassen, die heute in Covid haben. Und die Entscheidung der ersten Applikation von Chroma war, okay, wir sagen Chroma 1.0, es war normalerweise Angriff, das uh, schreibt uh, direkt alles zu MySQL. Um, after es war in Clubon, bevor Clubon. Uh, I spoke with Anthony uh, and he said, yeah, okay, it's very interesting uh, um, direction. Can you make some presentation about uh, this uh, application on, in Chicago? Uh, but I said, no, it's normally it's not uh, good enough and not performance. Uh, first I, I should or I have to uh, write a new one. It's, it was format uh, 2.0. Uh, and normally it was also based on NGREP. But uh, it was a little bit uh, with, uh, with table partitioning and so on. It was in, in a web interface based on Joomla, if you remember with uh, CMS. And uh, after my presentation in Chicago, I met uh, Ensa and we decided to make it uh, much, much better. And uh, of course, I also spoke with Bolton and uh, we decided to implement this feature inside of uh, OpenZip and, oh, sorry, Camellia and both perform, uh, and uh, exactly like the uh, zip, zip capture model. Um, it's in, uh, in course, uh, already exists a zip trace model, and, uh, which uh, writes everything also in MySQL, and we just dis okay, define or decide uh, to make a special protocol. It's what's happened. We can discuss what happened later. And uh, first, uh, we wrote a new comma free uh, zero uh, based on own CMS. Uh, it was PHP, JavaScript, and so on and so on. And uh, it's based on Camille or OpenZips, it's uh, what you prefer. Okay, here we're talking about OpenZips, sorry. Uh, and uh, you can write directly uh, with the help of zip trace or capture engine uh, all messages to centralize the database and make manipulation or not manipulation to troubleshooting the scope which already happened. So. And just to be clear, yeah. if you go on our repository today, yeah, we'll yes, I, can, I can just uh, because why it's comma five because probably you will confuse uh, why it's comma five because a um, couple it's three years ago or two uh, four, two years ago we did the development uh, comma four and we decided to release but some this uh, licensing and so on so we. Uh, it was not able to release it, and we decided to make a completely new one with a new code uh, without any commercial part. And now it uh, has name Coma 5. So, just not to be uh, scared. Yeah, we don't want to be confusing. If you go on our repository today, you will still find uh, version Homer 3. What you see today, Homer 5 will be released in about uh, 15 days. So, before the end of the month, it will be uh, public. Uh, we'll uh, present it. So, this is an absolute uh, preview. Nobody has seen this before. And uh, yeah, that's quite a lot of it. So we, we like to spend some time here, especially since quite a few guys that already use it, probably makes sense. Uh, so again, what is Homer? Homer is a, a free, uh, completely open source implementation of a centralized uh, packet capture solution for voice. Uh, as Alexander explained, it's, uh, it, it didn't just fall off the tree, so it's the fruit of uh, many years of uh, improvement, redesign, re-implementation, and uh, as you said, we even have a, a full entire version 4 that was not even ever released. Uh, and it was awesome, so that's a shame, but unfortunately we, did, we made it too good and we pissed off some people uh, and their concepts. So yeah, here we go. Uh, it comes again in a completely clean version. So what it does, uh, it's very similar to what we had discussed before, but here we're talking about the application uh, itself, so we can get into more detail. Um, it, it's first of all, it's a turnkey solution, so it does uh, pretty much everything. It's, it's still modular, meaning that the uh, the um, um, packet mirroring and the capture part are split. They're uh, very flexible. They're configurable. You design how it works within the platform. But uh, other than that, once you have the packets in the database, the rest is hopefully uh, uh, completely. Uh, self -handled. So uh, what it does, uh, it feeds from uh, data into a database, we'll see exactly how, and then it uh, reads it back to you via API. What it allows you to do in essence is just to uh, find uh, calls and sessions on your network, uh, find issues with those sessions, correlate them to other sessions, which might be back-to-back uh, -back legs, uh, as simple as that, and uh, simply, quickly, figure out what happened to that call, the quality of that call, 
uh, and anything related to it, we'll see how uh, in which detail. Uh, what we do uh, extremely good by now uh, is in the, the uh, correlation part. So we have several uh, subscripting parts where you can uh, define how the system aggregates legs and finds um, uh, related uh, sessions. Uh, we have a very good uh, visual representation of those legs, so it doesn't matter the complexity or how many sessions involved. We are uh, we are spinning out a very nice. Uh, uh, canvas-based call flow. Um, we well, we have very fast. Uh, we can enable very fast detection of anomalies because of, of our uh, statistical engine. So everything that we capture is also uh, broke down and saved into statistics. Those statistics are going to be the most meaningful uh, data that you can get out of this because there are pointers at issue. So you don't know what the issue is, but you can immediately tell anomalies. Uh, and or link a monitoring system to uh, look at those anomalies, so you can be alarmed in real time. Um, it's easy to integrate, so the, the new version is, uh, delivers a, a real uh, standard API. The uh, version 3 was uh, had some areas that were still uh, a little bit young and hackish. Uh, this time is clean, so you can really take and reintegrate all of our functionality in your own platform if you wish. And then finally, it's going to be easy to install. So those of you that already use it know that uh, under certain scenarios, it's not as fun as it should be to get it up and running. Uh, our support, uh, I believe, is, is pretty good and pretty quick, but still, the fact that you need support is uh, an indicator that we needed to improve that part. And we did. So, oops, too fast. Homer 5, what's new in Homer 5? And here, uh, sorry for those that uh, are not familiar with the uh, previous version, but I don't think you'll uh, uh, miss out much. But for those that do know it, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the let's say, the, the main, uh, for those that don't know it, sorry, I'm flipping it out. For those that don't know it at all, those are the, the main uh, features. So Homer can support uh, all together, and mostly thanks to the platform it uses, so uh, open zips uh, uh, on top high uh, packets per second rate. So you can throw a lot of traffic at it, and uh, you can use it to aggregate uh, data from uh, many systems, not just one. So it's not designed to be you know, just a single platform, but it's designed to be uh, an aggregator. Uh, so the fact that we also uh, provide the capture agent helps. So you can have as many uh, capture agents as you wish on your network, feeding data to the same uh, uh, centralized platform. Multiple DB options. Uh, in this new version, uh, we are uh, not only uh, supporting MySQL and uh, Postgres, but we extended it to the also support Elasticsearch and uh, InfluxDB, and there's more coming. So you can finally mix uh, the data that you have captured with other data that other tools might have captured on your network, and just bring it all together. So you can finally mix uh, statistics, and we'll see some very good examples. Uh, right after. We uh, migrated from our own uh, visual framework, which was uh, by now falling apart. jQuery, uh, yeah, uh, jQuery uh, and a lot of homemade uh, hacks. Yeah. yeah, over the years it, it, it became uh, a cluster F. Of, uh, yeah, and mostly it was pushing away uh, contributors. So everybody that wanted to do a contribution to our uh, interface was taking a look at it and saying, oh, uh, no. So right now, it's a pure uh, Angular uh, interface. It's very easy uh, to just jump in, extend it, create new widgets, create new uh, um, uh, functionality uh, with the data, and uh, it's also fun. Uh, we have added a whole bunch of new uh, um, widgets to visualize the data and to build uh, representations of it. So uh, we, we were making technical people already quite happy. Uh, but not their managers. So now you can also build uh, dashboards and visualizers with the people that pay your uh, salary can uh, make something out of. Uh, we improved, of course, the uh, search and filtering. This is a never ending uh, process uh, improvement. Um, yeah, the rest is the classical stuff. So uh, you can uh, again um, uh, search, display intense call flows, ext uh, extract everything to uh, PCAP text files or uh, bundled formats that we're working on, so you can uh, share this information with uh, people external to your network without compromising uh, the information of your network. Multi-user support out of the box, either local or uh, centralized, which are the business. And then uh, our community, which is our uh, very uh, favorite. So there's a lot of people that use the solutions, there's a lot of people that are willing to help you uh, get there, uh, and then of course ourselves. 
Here's a few examples, so just to show you how the uh, new Hummer looks and works, uh, the, the car of it is of course always uh, the uh, search bar, because that's where all of us will start. So this is how uh, it looks today. Uh, the beauty of it is that uh, as compared to the older versions of Hummer, now you can build your own farms. So you can make a farm for uh, your engineering team and one maybe for your support team with only the fields that you want them to have or you can modify it as, as to look as uh, whatever you want. Each of those fields, each of those menus is completely dynamic, so you decide, create a farm, create it with four fields, and what those fields do. Uh, then you simply fill it up here, where we're just displaying uh, a standard farm search, where the only filter is the method. Uh, so this will produce results. So we'll uh, present the table. Uh, color coded by session, so each one of those uh, colors belongs to the same session. You can easily see how it's uh, uh, distributed. Uh, we have columns, so where of course you can see the uh, internal ID of this capture, the date, uh, the method. Uh, here, of course, we filter by invite, but we'll have some more examples as well. Uh, request URI from users. Uh, call ID is the, going to be the key information. And here, actually, we're looking at an attack. You'll notice the uh, user agent is um, CPCLI. So it was a, either a scan or an attack which uh, fits our research. Thank you to everybody sending us attacks. Uh, we filter, but otherwise, you will see also the service IP, destination, and so on. Once you click on call ID, you immediately get the call flow for that session generated on your screen. This is canvas based, so it can uh, uh, spread, zoomed, export it. You can take it, you can bring it into your reports, presentations, share it with the customers an image, and whatnot. This is a single session. Of course, if you would have more legs, you would see uh, more elements and more uh, see, uh, messages going back and forth. If you click any of those methods, which is actually what we're here for, you get full payload out. So, Here's it. This is the this is basically the uh, the job done. Uh, the, the packet is there. You find it easily. You put it together with your messages easily, and you do your investigation. Once you're done, you can of course take this, share it with a colleague, export it to the customer as a pickup uh, text, uh, or talk with the carrier, do your job. Basically, from here on, you're actually working, and you're not wasting time figuring out how to do your work. Uh, the beauty of the new Hummer is the uh, uh, actually how we allow users to rebuild their experience and the dashboards, similar to what many platforms do nowadays. So we have uh, tough competition uh, with Elasticsearch, Kibana, Grafana. That's, uh, that's literally tons of uh, beautiful uh, solutions to uh, visualize data, but none of them was, of course, voice-centric enough for us. Uh, so we did it ourselves. Here, uh, this is an example of data from uh, the um, uh, seed capture API. Uh, this is completely built uh, of uh, a formula, so you can uh, take a chart type, pick an API function, define the fields that you want to deal with, and uh, there you have it. And then uh, what's real, what's left is just to decide the size of the uh, widget that you're looking at. So here we show just a breakdown of uh, IP. Uh, registration and invites as detected uh, by the system, ASR, NER, uh, from the API, user agent invites, breakdown, and this is all normal. So this is stuff that you already had in Homer, just now you can design it to be whatever you want. What's new is uh, the rest. So right now you can mix uh, your uh, detections and your voice traffic with detections from other systems. So here uh, we have, uh, um, this, this example actually is a, a triple play. So in the same dashboard, you're looking at uh, data from Homer on the, on the right side. So uh, this is uh, um, okay. packet counters and method distribution from your own system that we're monitoring. In the middle, we have uh, aggregations from Elasticsearch, which was looking just at the network. This was captured by uh, NTOPS and Probe, and it was just uh, feeding down a breakdown of um, um, protocol uh, packet uh, measurements by, uh, yeah, with just bytes and packets exchanged by hosts and their protocol. And here we can again display it and uh, match it to our uh, voice logic. So we can see which protocols consume what over a period of time, uh, histogram for uh, a specific type of packet. And then here we go uh, at, the, at the bottom left, you see an influx in the query, which is actually looking at the load of the system which is performing the capture. So we bring it all together. You can monitor in the same dashboard 
the uh, voice statistics, uh, methods, everything that you have captured from your capture agents. You can monitor parallel systems, which might be looking at your network performance, logs, CDRs, and whatnot. And then you can monitor your capture systems performance uh, internally. So you can see when you, you know, you're reaching capacity, you're overloading yourself, and so on. Finally, all in one yeah, more place. Normally, okay, normally you can send samples from OpenZips or from different perform. Uh, and it starts the protocol, uh, all the information to InfluxDB and just use InfluxDB for statistics, like right? time, uh, time series database. So, okay, well, of course we prefer to use our uh, MySQL for statistics, which is already integrated in uh, Homo, but if you firmware or you prefer InfluxDB, you're welcome. So it's uh, all statistics. For, for example, you can send also statistics from RTP engine with Grafana protocol and uh, immediately write InfluxDB. And in this dashboard, you can see um, how many packets uh, or the ratio of uh, your TP blocks. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I'll can do the introduction and you take yeah, yeah. Uh, So, of course, we're here for OpenSIPS. So, uh, OpenSIPS is actually uh, able to be uh, or become a complete uh, capture system, both sides, so capture agent and capture server. Uh, this is how Alexander explained before, uh, thanks to the uh, SIP trace and SIP capture modules, which have been now uh, in the project for quite some time and are now uh, upcoming for a, a good uh, redesign and optimizations. So, what I do, uh, basically, you can turn uh, an open SIP instance into a, either a capture agent, so with a SIP trace module, you can uh, cherry pick uh, and uh, forward. Uh, specific packets, methods on your network to a capture server. You can do this by uh, a logic or you can just forward everything uh, at once. Uh, this is done using the HAP encapsulation protocol. Uh, and on the other side, uh, you can have an Oreo OpenSIP instance become the capture server. So this time with a SIP capture module, uh, which allows you to open uh, HAP uh, sockets on the, on the system where you can uh, receive uh, parse, index, and store uh, packets. And it's not only going to be methods. This can be anything that can be carried by the HAP encapsulation protocol. So nowadays, we support uh, signaling, RTP statistics, logs, uh, CDRs, and uh, it's, it's a growing list. Uh, most of all, we support uh, JSON payloads. So you can just send uh, arbitrary data to a collector with a correlation ID. So for instance, let's say that you have a uh, system logs where you have your call ID and uh, you express uh, one of the parameters that your uh, your software okay. is performing, building, whatever it be. You can take this information, extract, uh, for instance, the call ID with a regex expression, and then forward everything to a collector uh, with a hand protocol. And this can be correlated now with your uh, messages. So all of a sudden, you're looking at uh, SIP sessions, and then you have a tab where you can see any other log so entry. It's a yeah. was, uh, provision one. It's here from the website. You see here. You can just click box and uh, see all details what you can send to this uh, To drop to make an example yeah, last night, but it's there. Yeah. For example, it's, uh, if uh, you see what this was released uh, 402, it's payment requirement. Yeah. You don't know why, yeah? because you should, after this, you see 402, you should go to Vox, ah, sorry, you should go to Vox and check uh, why it was um, okay, rejected. But now you can immediately start in the ground to uh, have pipe application on, on Silver and send all log information directly to the phone. You just click on uh, lock tab and you see why it was rejected. So, uh, custom don't have money in the uh, account and uh, it's also a reason for rejection. And once again, the beautiful thing is that this is up to you. So this is just a tool that you can uh, implement and design your own solution. We don't restrict what, which kind of data you can send or even suggest it. This is completely up to you. You can just feed it in and uh, do your own correlation. It doesn't matter what you care about, you can put it together this way. Um, so yeah, I think we, we, we said enough here. Uh, the three methods that you can uh, uh, grab packets is of course one is a HAP socket, which we already described, but you can also uh, just uh, use a raw uh, capture, or you can also receive IPLP from uh, ACME SPC, which uh, is not very much used, but it's there. Yes. So maybe Alexander here, you can explain a little bit how uh, the uh, configuration from the capture um, uh, server works, because it's interesting. 
Yeah, okay, but it isn't simple, but in simple, so you just uh, have a simple configuration and you can uh, route and uh, on reply route, you can just define which options you would like to store in uh, in database. And, uh, in Homo 5, we just redesigned also um, MySQL schema. Uh, before, we used one table, zip, uh, zip capture table, which has um, partitioning. Uh, now we decide, uh, decide uh, to make uh, for each day uh, own table, which also will be partitioning up, up, uh, by time, time. In this case, you can change schema for next day. Uh, for example, if you don't like what your zip, mes uh, zip message um, field is only 1,500 uh, chapters, uh, you would like to store more, you can just, uh, for next day, you, you can just um, change it and this will definitely apply. Now, if you would like, if you would like to change uh, bar chart uh, to big one, you should completely to rebuild the table. And if you have a huge traffic in this table, this can take probably um, okay hours um, or day day. So in this case, it's better, of course, to uh, to have a separate table for each day. And also, uh, what we did decide uh, in Homo five. Uh, for each transaction, you have own table. For example, for call transaction, uh, you can just define uh, it's uh, invite, buy, cancel, 200k for cancel, and so on and so on. It should still be stored in uh, zip capture call. Uh, of course, it's timestamp, uh, and uh, registration will be stored in the registration, and uh, rest messages, options, and so on, which uh, or publish, notify, and so on, which are not related to your call, uh, will be stored in, uh, in the rest table. So in, in this case, you, uh, your uh, search will be speed up. It's uh, well, light speed huh? only, and uh, yeah, you have uh, more, more possibility to drop data if you don't have enough HDD and so on and so on. So it's depends on of, of you. Um, so here it's an uh, example of how alarms and statistic logic works in, uh, in OpenZix. You can just define um, how many registration packets come in uh, this interval, uh, write statistic. Uh, if uh, you have friendly scanner alarms, you also write this information to log or uh, in uh, block table and so on and so on. So you have centralized a solution for your complete view network. So if you have many than uh, one or OpenZip's uh, instance or free switch and so on, you can just uh, uh, centralize in one uh, common, uh, common uh, application, you can just define which uh, packets or which IP can be blocked and so on. So exactly here, it's, you can define uh, which method uh, will be stored in which table. And uh, now you can find also timestamp. Uh, if you don't like uh, daily tables, you can just find per week or per month and so on and so on. Uh, okay, it's uh, also, uh, this was one request from our customer to, st uh, make, to use um, uh, one, one, one time archiving. Of course, this uh, MySQL is a little bit um, heavy to, to keep a few, okay, much data in database. And we decide just make a workaround. You can um, install Homer uh, on a separate uh, server and to reuse FreddDB. So everything what you will receive like help, it will be split uh, and write to a separate file, which you can just load it up in MySQL on demand. So in this case, you can just uh, write everything in file, like I said, and make zip um, uh, archiving and keep it um, on tape or on whatever. You don't need to have um, a good EO, uh, EO base or a good HD for this. Yeah, we'll speed up a little bit because we're uh, somewhat behind schedule. So uh, if you want to uh, get home... You have 10 more minutes. Thank you. Uh, if you want to get it installed uh, quickly to take a look at it, we have uh, uh, an installer. Mind, again, I need to specify this. Uh, if you're running today, we'll install version 3 of Homer. Uh, in about a couple of weeks' time, uh, on GitHub, we'll publish uh, the brand new version, the brand new installers, and everything else. From the capture part, uh, nothing changes, so uh, the installer just really pulls uh, the, uh, the source from the repository, so you would get the current version of everything. Um, We'll distribute this, or you can have a reference to it later. Uh, we haven't talked about how to put data into Homer, so we'll see what we support. Um, as we said, uh, most of it is based on the hack encapsulation protocol, uh, which is currently uh, being drafted to, uh, to become something more official. Uh, I have reports that it's not easy to find information about hack, so we're working on making this more uh, proper. 
uh, but HEP, uh, meanwhile, has been integrated across uh, many of the leading platforms. So you have an integrated HEP capture agent within OpenSeq, Camel Helio, FreeSwitch, Asterix, SeqXX, and a few more. But those are the leading ones for us. And uh, on our wiki, we do have example uh, configuration files for all of those systems, as well as our uh, separated capture agents. We also offer in GitHub several example implementations for uh, HEP encapsulation, decapsulation in Java, C, C++, Erlang and Go. Okay, probably it's better to say what is in CAP. Yeah? Uh, it was now, currently we have the free version, the source version is, uh, was, uh, okay, copy of ID and E the protocol. Uh, second version it was extension with timestamp. And uh, HEP protocol, it's, it's normally you can put uh, all, all packets, uh, all NASA protocol, and send to centralized uh, solution and uh, store it in, in database. So you, you can also put some additional information like correlation ID. Uh, Information about MOS, TCP, packets, and so on. So, on. it's a special. It's a spe it's, it's not uh, can be used only for SIP or MGCP. It can be used also for different protocol, like also for loading uh, customs. And so, if you want to implement myself, you can also have examples uh, how it uh, can be used in C, in C++, and Java, and uh, on Go. And if you get stuck, you can contact us and we'll be glad to help you or we'll be glad to make it better. Um, if you don't have any of those platforms uh, with an integrated capture agent, you can use our capture agent project, which is uh, basically a, um, a dedicated uh, capture agent, or at least so it was started, it was a dedicated capture agent for Homer. Today it's a little bit more than that, uh, so it's really a, a capture framework uh, agent. Uh, where it's very easy to implement additional protocols, additional modules for in and out. Currently, it is really purposed for uh, use with Homer, uh, but it's not limited to it at all. So uh, it ships uh, with uh, um, uh, modules, uh, the universal protocol module, uh, which currently supports uh, SIP and uh, XMPP. Uh, so it can mirror those to a uh, Homer instance. RTCP module, which is able to uh, indeed extract uh, RTCP or RTCP XR. Uh, packets, par parse them, collect them, and forward them. A CLI module, which uh, allows you to access the uh, cap agent instance, configure it, see statistics, and so on. And of course, the HEP module, which is used to stream all the data back to the collector. We do support in this version also encryption and uh, compression. So you can, um, okay, for HEP, for within the HEP protocol, of course. Uh, so you can stream encrypted uh, signaling and you can compress it, saving up to uh, around 30%. Uh, over your uh, mirroring costs. Uh, upcoming is the remote API, which allows you to uh, put together a fleet of capture agents and configure them uh, remotely. So you basically deploy and uh, go on. Uh, well, another way to put data into Homer uh, in an easy way is to use SeedGrab. So SeedGrab, uh, as Alexander mentioned, uh, is good for troubleshooting, but you can also use to forward uh, what you're troubleshooting, what you're seeing on the screen to a collector to, uh, and find it there later. So you can actually uh, keep uh, all the information without silly uh, <coughs> copy, paste of the screen, and so on. Uh, here's an example how you can do it. All you have to do is add the minus H option. Uh, another good way is uh, nProbe. So nProbe uh, from uh, NTOP uh, as a HEP module that we have developed uh, together. Which, and uh, it's able, if you use nProbe at all for any other purposes, now you can use it also for uh, voice. Uh, last but not least, and it's not going to be last, but we have very little time, you can also feed uh, media, QS uh, and media related statistics into the system. Uh, there's uh, quite a few, sorry, I'm going fast. Um, now, of course, uh, all is based on RTP, RTCP, uh, and uh, the extended reports and the user agent reports, so RTCP XR and XMPRTP stats, which are uh, generated by user agents. Hopefully, uh, most of you are familiar with those and uh, not, don't use that much. Uh, we have a few ways to put those uh, together and complete the full picture. So we have network statistics, signaling, and also QS. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, it's Ubi here. It's uh, uh, not only Homer uh, 5 will be released uh, soon, it's uh, also it will be called uh, Captation 6, and yeah, it's a new generation, which completely uh, has a new um, design and also has a good uh, model of the CPXR, so you can just de uh, decide or start it with the CPXR model and say, all your user, uh, user agents sent uh, the CPXR information to, to this um, cat agent socket. And it will be immediately forwarded to Parsec and forwarded to Homer. And you will see all the CPXR statistics in, in Homer. 
Actually, we had an example for this down the road, but yeah, I'm sorry, we have to move really fast now. So, uh, RTC Big Stars, uh, generated by user agents, usually sent to a collector. This collector can now be a capture agent, and then you can forward it to Homer. Another way uh, which you can simulate this if your user agent doesn't support it is by using the uh, RTP uh, Reaper, which is a Java application you can just run on the network. It sniffs uh, SIP, RTP, RTCP, and it generates RTC Big Star uh, packets, again, towards the collector. Another good way, if you use asterisk, is to use our patch, uh, which Alexander has developed, uh, res uh, app RTCP module, where you can take all the RTCP uh, packets on your network and forward them again to a Homer instance, where you can analyze them in real time. And there's a nice demo on YouTube if you want to see this in action. It's called uh, Homer Dangerous Demo from last year. Uh, user agent reports, as we mentioned, uh, many user agents can uh, report their quality towards the end of the call. I know we have three minutes. Uh, you can capture those and uh, five. Good, thank you. Uh, you can capture those uh, reports, uh, which are usually included in the uh, buy or reply to buy, and uh, parse them and uh, find them in Homer. So you can have a quick reference how the user agent experience was from a quality perspective. Uh, you, if you use a RTP proxy, uh, soon also in RTP engine, you can take the internal statistics of the relay and you can also return them uh, to the proxy to be included in the buyer 200. Okay, so here we have a, just a simple dummy example to replicate a pseudo PRTP stat, but you can include anything in there really. Uh, and if the standard is not enough, you can make your own. Or you can use uh, Grafana protocol and send in directly to InfoTCB and. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, last but not least, if you don't have any of those and you really need to uh, do statistics of the network, we have uh, developed also with NTOP uh, an extension for NPRO, which is able to uh, um, detect uh, with NDPI library uh, RTP streams uh, completely independent and report on them to a, a collector. The collector in this case can be Homer because it supports the app uh, protocol with it, but it can be also any other. Uh, backend because it can be exported as uh, a just JSON payload by um, TCP. And we also have a plugin for Elasticsearch, so you can just send those directly to uh, uh, Boom KPI. Uh, it produces a list that you see here on the right, so it's a very complete uh, analysis and it's uh, granular. So you can decide to have one of these reports every 10 seconds, 6 seconds, 1 minute. Again, super quick here, if you have, uh, we have shown this before, but if you have already, for instance, Elasticsearch cluster where you have data, you can now mix it. Uh, so you can bring either Elasticsearch into Homer or you can bring our data into Elasticsearch. So uh, both CaptAgent and MPro are able to export uh, full payload uh, in JSON to a collector. So you can, let's say, make your own uh, Homer within Elasticsearch. We have made also a few plugins for the old uh, Kibana to uh, help. Uh, but now don't use it, you, can, you should use Homer for it. Self-promotion. Uh, Headpipe, uh, last but not least, is a tool on our uh, GitHub, which uh, basically uh, is a little uh, demo implementation of the head protocol. It's very easy to modify, and it allows you to uh, stream uh, uh, your own uh, lines, let's say, to a head collector. Also, to see how easy it is to implement the head protocol. If you're interested, I invite you to check it out, and of course, contact us uh, if you have uh, any ideas. Uh, in the last part, we had a few uh, um, automated test friendly flows. Uh, I'll just tell you what it was about. Uh, of course, a couple of recipes with uh, PJC and SIPSAC, which I'm sure all of you have used. And then BearSIP, uh, which hopefully you guys know, it's a, a very nice uh, terminal user agent. We implemented um, uh, XRTP stat support. So if you use BearSIP, you can enable RTP stats, and uh, on your buyer 200K, they will be included and they can be parsed. And uh, yeah, I think we're, yeah. that's all folks. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I guess we don't have time now, but feel free to reach us anytime or uh, send us an email or find us in the blog. Yeah, sure. Come forward. Can you give us any indication of performance benchmarks on different storage backends? Sure. Uh, performance of different uh, storage backends. Uh, we, we okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, now currently we use uh, InnoDB, so it's uh, performance is enough. Uh, before we use my, my ISAM, of course, uh, some uh, locking. Uh, it's a huge problem. Currently, with in, uh, InnoDB and Barracuda format, it's um, compressor format. EOA is perfect. So one of our customers, one and one I mentioned this yesterday, has around 3.5 billion records in one table, and this works, in one, one server. 
So it's not a problem at all if somebody say, I told it uh, many, many times, if somebody say, MySQL is sucks, yeah, uh, use pages, uh, okay. uh, uh, Postgres and so on, so on, say, yeah, you could not, if or you can, uh, tune this properly. So if you use our uh, config, we, which we uh, posted on uh, Wikipedia, on our Wikipedia, or Wiki, uh, Wikipedia, sorry, on our Wiki, and you, it's a properly normal config uh, with just an optimization of uh, uh, caching uh, keys and, and uh, inserts. It works perfect. So, uh, this customer is also one of our customer champions. It uh, has around um, 12,000 uh, message per second. It's inserted in one MySQL database. It's old Homo 3. And in Homo 5, it's uh, in capacity much, much, much more. Yeah, okay, I, I mentioned this already. It's a uh, gentleman that has uh, 12k uh, message per second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 12. 12. Two, two database inserts. Yeah. Okay. And that's a single node. It's, it's a single node and a single table. It's not split into many tables. Yeah? So it's one table. In Homo 5, it's, it will be much, much better to, and uh, performance will be much better because it's uh, several tables and it will be not a lot. Because in the DB, it's, uh, okay, my people say, yeah, in, in the DB it's uh, nice because it's raw, raw working. Yeah, it's not really true because it's caching and so on and so on. It's block also a full table. In this case, if you have um, um, you know, split it by, okay, sharding by transactions, you will be uh, writing different tables, its performance will be awesome. Yeah, because I, I remember some time ago, maybe a couple of months, uh, we tried to use on a running yeah. system, but they were around like uh, uh, 6,000 volts per second, you know, the trunking. Uh, yeah, okay, I understood, I understood. Um, okay, I can just uh, make a point what uh, it's probably be, uh, okay, bad HDD. So normally, we, what we can say uh, about all of our customers, uh, if you would like to have a good performance, you should have separate HDD only for database, not share with uh, operation system or with logging and so on and so on. It's, uh, this HDD should be separate, it's uh, one slice, and of course, better use uh, RAID 0 in this case. So it's uh, more rates. Uh, uh, HD, you have a base, you have more performance because it will be split and sharding automatically on, on the rate controller. So it's, I don't see any points why it should be solved. It's only depends on your system and how you configure it. So also, this, if you compare with Cassandra or, or to Mon uh, MongoDB, there is uh, no scale is, is awesome. It's uh, uh, okay, old C uh, MySQL or BG, uh, BGS scale, it's also nice. It's also nice if you have tune and configure your system uh, in the right way. So don't, don't hesitate to contact us and we, of course, we help every, everybody who wrote mail and say we have some performance issues and so on. Just use HD parallels, which uh, performance rate you have on your HDD and uh, use uh, our MySQL uh, configuration and we help you, of course. That's another question. Does the WebPG 729 code it for the RTP? Is the RTP can, can the code initial G729? Uh, no, no, we don't report it. The RTP, we, uh, we capture RTCP and send statistic of RTCP uh, and store it in, in database. So uh, RTP analysis, we, you can use wait minute or... Uh, yeah, we or, have or, an application for this, but we don't do decoding. So we just do... We uh, don't write... Extraction. We don't write uh, RTP on, uh, on PCAC. We just, we, uh, we just use uh, statistic or we generate a statistic for RTP and RTCP. Of course, if you want, we can make on demand to uh, uh, capturing for RTP and so on and so on. It's also possible, you know, and to disk or end of application. But we don't write everything on HD, and uh, it's, for, for care, it's uh, impossible. Because, uh, okay, for small companies, probably it's a good solution to write everything on HDD and make a post-analysis or for call center. But for uh, big carriers, and uh, we are focusing on, on carriers, uh, Users, not the small. Um, we have already deployed version three. <coughs> we started to get some perform performance issues after the database growed to about 
five terabyte, terabyte. Um, I'm not sure about the number of records, but I think it's probably because there's only one table, and uh, with the new version, the performance will be better. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Probably you should also review the rotation parameters. We used the rotation uh, with two-hour interval, but it wasn't enough after some time. Yeah, okay, because you should, okay, 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 okay it's, it's, yeah, exactly, yeah. it's, uh, you, first you should make partition step, it's uh, slower, it's uh, slower as hitting it, so. yeah. and also, uh, if you create a new partition in table, it will be locked, completely locked, yeah. so yeah. it's yeah, yeah, a problem, awesome. and if you drop uh, all partition, it will also lock, in this case, where we decide to make a new table, each yeah, so, so we address exactly yeah, this yeah. sort of limitation. I'm, I'm looking forward to test the new version. Yeah, sure. Because the email will give you early access to it. Yeah, better, better will be released soon, mm -hmm. yeah, so you're welcome to use it. Thank you. Guys, uh, coming, this... coming back to the first question regarding the RTP, yeah. uh, one thing that the carrier needs is the load in reception functionality. <laughs> Uh, we offer this uh, separately. So we have decided uh, over experience that we didn't want to mix this with the uh, normal packet capture. So we do have a dedicated solution for lawful interception. It's uh, basically a dedicated capture agent. But for uh, a number of very good reasons, we have decided not to mix the two. Okay, so you're doing RTP capture on the low interception one? Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, this is X1, X2, X3 protocol. Exactly. It's already implemented in this cat agent. You can just install. Okay. Yeah, especially the same implementation you find in an Acme SPC as far as lawful interception is concerned. But, but you, we, we, yeah, it's, of course it's cheap. And we couldn't mix it with the uh, capture agent not to impact its future. So if anything happens to this LI project, uh, capture agent will be uh, clean from it. So we didn't want to cross the line there with a commercial you know, application. Any questions? Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Thank you.